Hey all, Tyler here at the Movie Beat. Uh, we're back with uh, the first Korean movie review of 2019. So pretty excited to get this year started off. Uh, this one is actually a new comedy drama film called Inside Me, or the actual direct translation is The Dude Inside Me. So I don't see how that title is really gonna play well um, with Western audiences. You know, just think about it. It's, yeah. So it's your tried and true body slash spirit swap gimmick a la Freaky Friday, or this one might more closely resemble that Zac Efron one, uh, 17 again. I didn't really, I didn't see that one, um, but there's a bunch of them. Uh, Big with Tom Hanks might be the most famous. Uh, there was that one movie, uh, Hot Chick. I don't know if you saw that. But anyways, this time around we have Pansu, who is this powerful boss of an organized crime gang. Think something along the lines of a mafioso type or yakuza type, who swaps bodies slash spirits with a wimpy, overweight high school boy named Dong Hyun. Now you could be thinking one of two things right now. A, oh God, just what we need another body swap movie or b oh my god that sounds hilarious i love body swap movies um to be honest i was probably more in the a category just because i'm really craving a lot more originality when i go to the movies these days um and knowing practically nothing about this movie other than that fact or that gimmick of it i wasn't that excited going in but after coming out i realized that's, well, I don't know why I was thinking that because let's admit it when these movies are done right they can be a lot of fun and I'm very happy to report that the dude inside me was done very very right it did a lot of things really well so let's get into the review the great thing about the story of the dude inside me is that despite its familiar formula there are so many ways in which this film makes these tried and true conventions its own. The way in which the relationships between the protagonists in this film develop takes surprising twists and turns that will make you want to applaud its writers, who brought us other fun original films like Mapado and The Art of Fighting. And also unlike other body swap films, The Dude Inside Me spends more time in those fun zones where it really revels in the time spent in those hilariously awkward scenarios rather than in some sort of a mad dash to break the curse, so to speak, as many of these types of films do. There are aspects of the comedy within this film that will be interesting to see how it's translated um, for Western audiences in the subtitling since a lot of the humor is actually based on the use of honorific speech or lack thereof as it relates to a younger person addressing a senior or vice versa, which is actually a really big part of Korean culture and communication. So for example, when you have a high school student speaking like a mob boss would to someone who is obviously older, really no matter what their position is, uh, it creates an additional element of shock value to the characters within the film um, and really becomes a crux of a lot of the comedy. So it'd just be interesting to see, you know, just how they word some of that dialogue. The Dude Inside Me has a lot of strengths, but none more so than its beyond stellar all around performances from its actors. In his first leading role, Joo Hyun from the K-pop group B1A4 knocks it out of the park as the wimpy fat kid turned mob boss. Particularly in the early stages of his characters, Dong Hyun's transformation while donning a fat suit, Joo Hyun delivers comedic gold as if he were a seasoned comedian in his portrayal of Dong Hyun re-establishing his position among the student hierarchy at his school. There are a ton of surprises in store for his character, and it was a real treat to watch his character evolve in both appearance and maturity. I, for one, am eagerly awaiting Joo Hyun's next film role after seeing him in this one. But what really elevated Joo Hyun's performance is his phenomenal supporting cast. Park Sung Woong, who plays the organized crime boss Pansu, and whose soul gets swapped for a wimpy high school kid, 
also brings a ton of laughs to the movie, especially in its final act. Dong Hyun's female classmate and ally at school, Hyun Jung, who is played rather brilliantly by the very cute Lee Soo Min, becomes almost the film's second lead as her part is written with a lot of depth and becomes involved in the story in some real surprising ways. And Ra Mi Ran, who plays Hyun Jung's single mother, is a powerhouse in her own right and has a very commanding screen presence that give an extra punch or two to her many comedic moments as well. And finally, my personal favorite character of the film, though, is Pansu's top enforcer, played by Lee Jun Hyuk, who is the first and only member of the organized crime gang to actually learn of the body swap and works to help Pansu retain his position amidst the power vacuum created by his absence. He gives a priceless performance as he watches over his boss's attempt to carry on business as usual in his newfound adolescent body. The Dude Inside Me feels to be in good hands at the helm of director Kang Hyo Jin, who gets the balance just right in terms of the dramedy on screen. The way in which the dramatically heavy scenes are able to dance back and forth between delivering both the feels as well as some genuine laughs shows there was delicate care in preserving a consistently entertaining tone and balance presumed to have originated within the script and having it effectively come through with the actor's performances. The director's only previous works that were familiar to me were Miss Wife, aka Wonderful Nightmare, and Twilight Gangsters. And although I hadn't seen either of those previously, um, it's a solid showing like The Dude Inside Me that really get me to go back through a director's filmography to get a better sense of their scope and their vision to see if a distinct voice sort of carries through their films. Um, and while I'm not going to rush to the film library uh, after seeing this one, I will be taking note of this director um, if an opportunity arises to check out one of his previous works. Technically speaking, The Dude Inside Me is solid. The dialogue is crystal clear and the sound effects are spot on. And although there is this kind of uncanny valley vibe with Ju Hyun's fat suit uh, towards the beginning of the films, that almost brings a sort of Jiminy Glick type element to the character, I actually feel that that boosts a lot of the comedic impact in the first half of the film which he's, when he's wearing this thing. So combined with a lot of his gestures and other aspects of his physical comedy, it's spot on the money for my opinion. Uh, and The Dude Inside Me also features a considerable amount of action scenes with some really entertaining fight choreography that goes above and beyond what I would say is typical for a film like this. The characters in The Dude Inside Me almost feel to have come straight off the page of a comic book or webtoon at times. Um, and I think that is in part due to the excellent art teams that were in charge of both the costuming and the makeup. From the school uniforms to the sleek gangster attire, everything is cut perfectly to fit the personality of each character. And when you have both gangsters and students filling up your cast of characters, your character roster, there's gonna be a lot of differentiating that needs to be done to make everyone stand out as uniquely as they do in this one. And they did a great job with that. Overall though, The Dude Inside Me comes as a huge surprise in just how funny and original it turned out to be. It's one of those films that include nearly every aspect of why we fans of Korean cinema really enjoy it so much. Uh, I do have a video that was posted a few months back, uh, you know, five reasons to check out Korean film. This movie does actually hit a lot of those points, so I really appreciated that. And as my first uh, Korean film review and first Korean film experience of 2019, um, I'm happy to say that the year is really starting off on the right foot. Uh, so. I'm looking forward to what the rest of this year has to offer. This is one of those movies that I would pick up on Blu-ray when it does come out because it's got a lot of rewatchability. So I'm going to rate this one an overall 7.5 out of 10. Don't pass this one up thinking it's too gimmicky um, or something. Just go out and see it. Uh, let me know what you thought of it in the comments below. Uh, I am trying out a little bit 
of a new review format here in 2019, so let me know if you dig it or not. Until next time, I'm Tyler at The Movie Beat. Keep watching movies.